Hello dear members and welcome to another edition of HJ Global News. The events marking the 10th anniversary of True Father's Holy Ascension are currently being held successfully at the HJ Chanwan Complex, with leaders and members from around the world in attendance. In this edition of HJ Global News, we will go in detail about True Mother's activities and the international leadership conferences held in different continents. We will conclude with some pictures of the problems unfolding around the world. True Mother held a special banquet at Chongjongung attended by 63 leaders of Korea. This meeting was inspired by True Mother's desire to encourage the leaders who are working tirelessly on the preparation of the 10th anniversary of True Father's Holy Ascension and the construction of Chongwondong. Hong Bok Gook, regional co-chair of Korea, conducted a representative prayer in which he expressed his desire for everyone to unite wholeheartedly with True Parents during this 40-day period and fulfill their duty as children of filial piety. True Mother encouraged all these dedicated leaders in the Providence with a particular healthy menu to help them combat the humid and sweltering heat of these days. Chungubek 영양되는 것을 집어넣고 이제 그걸 찌는 거야. 그렇게 요리가 돼서 나올 겁니다. 맛있게 드세요. <웃음> Reverend Igi Song, director of John Shimwon, offered the victory toast at the opening banquet. After the meal, Dr. Yoon Yong Ho gave a report on the preparations of the various events. 신통일 한국과 신통일 세계를 위해서 저희들이 내부 외환의 어려움이 있지만 어머님이 계시기 때문에 어머님을 모시고 우리가 전진한다면 반드시 승리하고 그 승리를 넘어서서 새로운 시대와 새로운 축복이 열릴 것이라 믿습니다. 그래서 그 생력 그리고 생력 요소를 가슴에 품고 우리 남은 이 기간 정말 수고하고 전진하면 좋겠습니다. 우리 어머님께 다시 한번 감사해. 박수를 한번 올려주시면 좋겠습니다. Afterwards, the leaders then expressed their hearts of filial piety by singing songs in response to True Mother's immense love. Chu Jin Tae, regional co-chair of Korea, then led the three shouts of Okmanse to end the meeting. The International Leadership Conference, ILC, were held in each continental region between the end of July and the beginning of August as part of a special 40-day devotional condition for the success of the 10th anniversary of the Holy Ascension of True Father. They took place exactly on the 20th, 28th, 29th July in North America, 29th to 31st in Asia Pacific, the 2nd to the 3rd of August in Africa, 26th of July and 4th of August in Europe, and the 3rd to the 4th of August in Latin America. In Asia Pacific, 300 VIPs from 25 countries in the region attended the conference, including five heads of state, parliamentarians, diplomats, civil society leaders, religious leaders, and intellectuals, among whom 31 people spoke. Dr. Thomas Walsh, Chairman of UPF, provided some clarification on the value of the Korean Peninsula Peace Summit and the Seoul Declaration. A panel of seniors, diplomats and scholars gave their views on the analysts and strategy for peace on the Korean Peninsula. In North America, ALC was celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Washington Times newspaper. 
The special session on July 20th was attended by over 237 people, including over 40 members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Created by True Parents, the Washington Times has played the role of conservative media. Dan Burton, a former congressman, recalled that the Washington Times breathed fresh air into the political culture of Washington, D.C. The six sessions themselves took place on the 28th and 29th of July with the participation of more than 3,800 people and covered several topics including security in Northeast Asia and the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. These conferences, which were held as a prelude to the celebration of the 10th anniversary of True Father's Ascension, highlighted the value of the Seoul Declaration and its proposal as a peace charter and address the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula from an international perspective and approach. There were real spaces for discussion on the realization of a heavily unified Korea and heavily unified world. The 20th Peace Forum was conducted by the leaders of Chan Shim Wan and H.J. Chon Bo Heaven and Earth Training Center. Its theme was Hyojong Character Education and Religious Practices for a Heavily Unified Korea. In his welcoming speech, Dr. Yoon Yong Ho told stories of his recent visit to Niger and spoke about the importance of character education among young people and religious practices for a heavily defied Korea. Afterwards, Rev. Igi Son, director of Chon Shim Won and H.J. Chon Bo Training Center, spoke about the content and variety of programs offered at the center on character education and spirituality. He also introduced the model of life and value that characterize a healthy society. Professor Jin Sonbei then introduced the Hyojong ideology in a special lecture on the theory of a heavily unified Korea. After that, Monk Cha Hwang gave a lecture on the theory of Buddhist practice for the perfection of human being and the world. The General Secretary of the H.J. John Boheven and Earth Training Center then explained the essence of the Family Federation lies in the efforts to achieve the three great blessings. The forum continued with the exchanges between the speakers and the audience, who went through the proposed theme in detail. The General Assembly of Church Leaders of Korea opened with the first strategic meeting for the victory of Vision 2027. At the opening, Mrs. John Wonju McDavid guided the Hundok session and extended her greetings to the audience. Dr. Yoon Yong Ho then called on all participants to participate in the development of a common strategy. This was followed by a presentation of the strategic reports of each subregion. The strategic presentation part included a performance by IYSP youth, speeches by the sub-regional chairs, strategic reports by the leaders of three major districts, and the discussions on development strategies. At the closing ceremony, an award was given to the Best Blessing Preparation Program for Bachelors. Dr. Yoon Yong Ho then called on all participants to move forward in God's providence with the sincerity and spirit of Matthias. The event concluded with the traditional three shouts of Okmanse, guided by the IOSP leaders. In Germany, Peace Road 2022 Berlin stage commemorated on July 27, the day of the Korean War Amethyst Agreement. With slogans such as No New Walls in Europe, Remember Korea, the rally called for the end of the war in Ukraine, the reunification of the Korea, and the freedom and peace in Europe. This edition of Peace Road, celebrating its 10th anniversary, was attended by more than 1,000 people from 50 countries who fervently expressed their desire for world peace. Around 100 cyclists set off from the Berlin TV Tower in the former East German district of Berlin to the square in front of the Brandenburg Gate.
They walked the distance on the police escort and held banners calling for unity in Europe. The banners contained phrases such as One Korea, Peace, End of War in Ukraine, and many other slogans calling for peace and unity. This was followed by the large peace rally held on the fall port of the Brandenburg Gate, a symbol of German reunification and peace, with over 1,000 people in attendance, including the cyclists. On the podium in the main square, German singers sang songs about peace and Ukrainian refugees condemned the tragedy of the invasion. At the end of the rally, the participants left the main square and walked through the West German area of Berlin in a peaceful march. Under the protection of the Berlin police, this peace march, which created a 500-meter long queue of people, attracted a lot of attention from the local people. The Berlin gathering took place over four days with a variety of content, including a conference, the Peace Road Unification March, and activities in support of refugees. UPF Brazil has also launched the 2022 edition of Peace Road. The event was attended by more than 250 people, including civil society leaders and presidents of NGOs and sports groups. A member of parliament and a Catholic priest expressed their support for the peaceful unification of Korea and world peace. The launch of the Peace Road 2022 in the Dominican Republic was possible thanks to the support of the FFWPU, IOYSP and other providential organizations. The event was held as part of a special 40-day devotional condition in preparation for the 10th anniversary of the Holy Ascension of True Father. It was attended by more than 50 people, including Mayor Eduardo Cruz. After a presentation on the works of True Parents, the cyclists set off from the center of the capital and traveled 86 kilometers to the training center in Piedra Blanca. UPF Costa Rica in Central America Subregion 4 organized a seminar for VIPs under the theme Declaration of Sustainable Peace for a Better Costa Rica. The event was made possible by webinars and visits to the country's high authorities during four months since March. The seminar was attended by more than 100 people, including the Minister of Justice, mayors and their deputies, former MPs, businessmen, intellectuals, media, professionals and religious leaders. 37 of them were awarded the title of Ambassadors for Peace. The main objective of the seminar was to introduce the works of UPF founders, the role of Ambassadors for Peace and the vision for interdependence, mutual prosperity and universal values in order to broaden the scope of providential organizations under the UN umbrella through the new Ambassadors for Peace. After watching videos promoting UPF, Think Tank 2022 and Peace Road, participants pledged to support and participate in the various activities of the organization. UPF Paraguay organized a conference on leadership and the launch of the International Association for Peace and Economic Development. Congratulatory speeches were given by three distinguished guests, including the Minister of Culture. After the screening of a video on the works of Tripperan, six of the seven mayors present at the event were awarded Ambassadors for Peace. UPF also received a special award from the President of the Chamber of Deputies in recognition of its actions for world peace. The event concluded with a beautiful testimony by the couple of former Paraguayan President Federico Franco. On July 16, UPF Brazil held a seminar on the vision of value of Ambassadors for Peace. The seminar was attended by 43 ambassadors, including one congressman and a Catholic priest. The objective of the seminar was to introduce the Ambassadors for Peace to the different activities of UPF so that they can become more involved and actively support them. The Family Federation of Canada held a seven-day youth summer camp in Toronto with over 40 participants. 
The theme of the seminar was The Hero in Me and consisted mainly of teaching, character education, and personal development. The young participants learned how to develop good habits, overcome difficulties, build strong relationships, explore one's identity, and live for the sake of others. They left the camp with a new friendship and memories that they will cherish forever. To create an environment conducive to witnessing and lay the solid foundation in subregion, blessed families are actively involved in the activities of Subregion 1 Residents Association. At its recent seminar, six members of the association presented the results of two years of activities as a success story. Chujinte, president of Subregion 1, emphasized that the members who participate in the activities of the Resident Association are now one team. He stressed that the more they share their experiences to all, the better results they will have. Ren Kim Shin Han then thanked the members and encouraged them to put in more efforts for the restoration of the subregion. The participants all committed themselves to becoming blessed families who make true parents proud in their communities. More than 300 members from the United States came to the International Peace Education Center in Las Vegas for a three-day Chonbu seminar to establish spiritual conditions, receive education on the spiritual world and ancestor liberation. The event also saw the inauguration of North American Chonbu Center in the presence of Reverend Zhong Jinhua, Deputy Director of Chonshinwan. In addition, a Chombo seminar was held at the Belvedere Training Center with more than 1,300 people in attendance. The Clifton Church invited a Japanese member who has read the entire exposition of the Divine Principle a hundred times to share his experience in front of other members. His testimony about how the Hundoke changed his character and his life prompted those present to formally commit to witnessing. Clifton Church also welcomed 12 new members to its community. There was also an engagement ceremony for two new couples. Regional President Yong Jong Shik offered a prayer to bless the engaged couples. Furthermore, a Baptist church in New Jersey held a blessing ceremony entitled The Blessing Across Borders. 13 couples participated in the blessing ceremony during which the Reverend Young explained to the blessed couples the importance of the blessing. In Bolivia, South America, a 21-day seminar was held for leaders of the Subregion 3. The seminar aimed to officially launch the 60 months Vision 2020 Victory Course. More than 30 people attended, including the regional chair Kim Dong-woo and national leaders from seven countries. The leaders began each day with Hundoke and a morning meditation and ended the day with earnest prayers. All participants were deeply inspired by the content of the program, including the teachings of the regional president on religious life, the sharing of reports by nations, and the testimonies of elder members. The highlight of this 10th anniversary celebration of True Father's Holy Ascension will be the Chanego Pledge Ceremony and the Songha Festival on Sunday, August 14. We hope that many of you will attend these events, which will be broadcast live on PeaceLink TV in several languages. We sincerely pray that throughout all these events, True Parents' legacy of peace may be spread throughout the world, and that like rivers flowing into the ocean, all people may unite and live in the love of Heavenly Parent. With these words, we close the edition of HD Global News. Thank you for following us and may God bless you.